Good evening, you're watching the news from the South End of Oman Television. First, the headlines. His Majesty Sultan Haitham issues five royal decrees. His Majesty the Sultan reviews through telephone calls with the Emirs of Kuwait and Qatar, King of Bahrain and Prime Minister of India, the exerted efforts in reducing the spread of COVID-19. And the Minister of Health announces 14 new confirmed cases with coronavirus COVID-19 and 67 recoveries. Those are the headlines and now the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Haitham bin Tariq issued five royal decrees. Royal Decree number 44 of 2020 approving joining the Sultan of Oman to the International Convention for the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearance. Article 1 approving the Sultan's joining this convention along with considering the following reservations. First, the Sultan of Oman declares that he does not recognize the jurisdiction of the Committee on Enforced Disappearance set forth in Article 33 of the Convention. Second, the Sultan of Oman declares that it shall be bound by provisions of Paragraph 1 of Article 42 of the said Convention. Article 2, the competent authority shall deposit the instrument of accession to the referred convention as per the provisions thereof, taking into account the said reservation. Article 3, this decree shall be published in the official gazette and come into force from the date of its issue. Road Decree number 45 of the 2020, approving joining of the Sultan of Oman to the convention against torture and other cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment or punishments adopted in New York on 10th of December 1984. Article 1 approving the Sultan joining this convention along with considering the following reservations. First, the Sultan of Oman declares that he does not recognize the jurisdiction of the Committee Against Torture set forth in Article 20 of the said con Convention. Second, the Sultan of Oman declares that it shall not be bound by provisions of the Paragraph 1 of Article 30 of the said Convention. Article 2, the competent authority shall deposit the instrument of accession to the referred Convention as per the provision thereof, taking into account the said reservation. Article 3, this decree shall be published in the official gazette and come into force from the date of its issue. Royal Decree number 46 of 2020, approving joining the Sultan of Oman to the International Co Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. Article 1, approving the Sultan joining this covenant along with considering the provisions of the items A and D from the paragraph 1 of the article 8, which concerns with the right to form trade unions, the right to strike for the employees in the governmental units. Article 2, the competent authority shall deposit the instrument of accession to the referred convention as per the provision thereof, taking into account the said reservation. Article 3, this decree shall be published in the official gazette and come into force from the date of its issue. Royal Decree number 47 over 2020 ratifying the agreement between the government of the Sultan of Oman and the government of India on visas mutual exception for holders of diplomatic, special, service and official passports signed in Muscat on February 11, 2018. Article 1 approving the agreement. Article 2 this decree shall be published in the official gazette and come into force from the date of its issue. Royal Decree number 48 over 2020, amending some provisions of Royal Decree number 29 over 2019, which relates to appointing members of Oman Human Rights Commission. Article 1, appointing Khalid bin Ahmed bin Said al-Saadi as a member of the Oman Human Rights Commission 
to replace the one mentioned in the third term for the first article of the Royal Decree number 29 of 2019. Article 2, the decree shall be published in the official gazette and shall come into force from the date of its issue. His Majesty Sultan Haitham bin Tariq exchanged telephone calls with His Royal Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah, Emir of Kuwait, His uh, Royal Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, Emir of uh, Qatar, His Majesty Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, King of Bahrain, His Excellency Narendra Modi, Prime Minister of India, Their Majesties and Their Highnesses expressed their kind wishes to His Majesty Sultan Haitham of great health, happiness, and long life and for the Omani people for the progress and prosperity. His Majesty the Sultan Haitham also expressed his kind wishes to their Majesties and their Highnesses of great health, happiness and long life and for their people for the prosperity and progress. During the conversation, His Majesty the Sultan Haitham reviewed the existing cooperation relations between the Sultan and their countries and the efforts exerted to combat coronavirus COVID-19. The Minister of Health announced the registration of 14 new confirmed cases with coronavirus COVID-19, which brings the total number registered in the Salted to 371, including 67 recoveries and two deaths. The Ministry of Health calls upon all to adhere to the isolation procedures by staying in an isolated room with an attached toilet and serving the isolated person from outside the room as instructed. The Ministry also advises all citizens and residents to keep on washing hands with water and soap, as well as avoiding touching the face, nose, mouth and eyes and following the hygienic habits when coughing and sneezing. The Ministry also urges everyone to adhere strictly to social distancing instructions issued by the COVID-19 Supreme Committee and the MOH, as well as saying staying at home and not to go out unless absolutely necessary. On the 7th of April each year, the world celebrates the World Health Day. The theme for this year is support nurses and midwives. It acknowledges the critical role that nurses and midwives play in keeping the world healthy. More details in the following report. His Excellency Dr. Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Saidi, Minister of Health, expressed his warmest thanks uh, to the nurses in particular and the health uh, care workers in general for their significant efforts, especially during the COVID-19 outbreak. The Minister of Health also praised the role and achievements of the staff working in the health sector, including doctors, administrators and technicians uh, throughout this period. On the occasion of the World Health Day, it gives me great pleasure to express my sincere thanks and gratitude and appreciation to all the staff working in healthcare, doctors, allied healthcare professionals and administrators, in particular nurses and midwives, since this year is being designated the year of nurses and midwives by WHO. What you have been doing so far uh, to compact COVID-19 has been great and helped a lot to slow down the progress of COVID-19. I urge all of you to be very careful, to protect yourselves, to minimize the risk of acquiring this infection. You are the safety net for our healthcare system and without you there will be no healthcare system. So I repeat my thanks and appreciation to all of you and I urge you again to be extremely careful in dealing with any patient who you should always suspect of having the virus until proven otherwise. 
In the midst of the global coronavirus pandemic, nurses and other healthcare workers are at the forefront of the COVID-19 response, providing highly quality, respectful treatment and care, leading community dialogue to address fears and questions, and in some instances, uh, collecting data for clinical studies. They often work in challenging circumstances, providing care to patients and risking their own lives while they fight for the lives of others. Nurses and midwives are the backbone of any health care system and the key to the achievement of universal health coverage. They play a critical role in health promotion, disease prevention, and the delivery of care in all settings. It is estimated that an additional 9 million nurses and midwives are needed if the world is to achieve universal health coverage by 2030. Abdullah bin Ahmed Arubai, South Anat of Oman Television, Masqa. In the first quarter of the current year, the sources of direct import and export through the Omani ports have expanded with diversified commodities uh, due to the efforts exerted by the public and private authorities in this field. More details in the following report. As a result of the efforts made by the public and private authorities, the sources of direct import and export through the Omani ports have expanded with diversified commodities during the first quarter of this year. The most prominent imported food commodities are grains that exceeded 411,000 tons, followed by fruits and vegetables which amounted to 19,000 tons. Fisheries products came at the forefront of food exports through the Omani ports with a quantity exceeding 63,000 tons. The ports and harbors managed by Marafi Company received more than 900 ships, carrying more than half a million tons of general cargo and a quarter of a million head of livestock. ASEAD Group confirms that the Omani ports are linked with 86 commercial ports in 40 countries. It is as well running 200 weekly shipping services to provide wide options for direct import and export from various countries of the world, supported by a package of incentives and privileges for traders and importers, including reducing fees of handling, shipping and unloading, and extending the free storage period in the Omani ports for goods destined for local markets. For the Sultanate of Oman Television, Saleh bin Khalfan al Rahbi. The public establishment for industrial states, Madain, signed an agreement today with Al Madina Logistics Services to manage and operate the customs area services at the Al Mazuna Freeport. More details in the following report. To enhance the efficiency of handling operations and management of loading and unloading containers and trucks at the land port, the Public Establishment for Industrial Estates, Medain, signed an agreement with the Medina Logistics Services to manage and operate the customs area services at the Mazuna Free Zone. This agreement will lead us to operate the Mazuna Free Zone to facilitate more uh, for loading and unloading the uh, goods and packages in the uh, Mazuna Free Zone. The agreement endeavors to improve the logistics operations in the Free Zone and facilitate the smooth flow of goods and containers for the import and export operations at the zone. We are very, very happy and glad uh, to sign this agreement with the uh, uh, free zone at Mazuna, uh, part of Al-Madain. We at al Madin Logistics uh, glad that we signed this agreement to operate and develop uh, the inspection and custom uh, facility at Mazuna that will help uh, facilitate the trade between Oman and Yemen and also helps uh, f uh, to develop more investment in the free zone. Uh, uh, and also to encourage more uh, trading between two countries, inshallah. It is worth mentioning that Al Mazuna Free Zone has witnessed a notable growth during the first quarter of the current year, despite the current global adverse conditions. 
the volume of imported goods to the free zone has reached more than 87,000 tons by the end of March 2020, recording an increase exceeding 44% compared to the same period last year. This growth is attributed to the various services provided to the investors and business owners at the one-stop station at the free zone, which saves time and effort as well as facilitates the services offered. For the Sultanate of Amman Television, Saleh bin Khalfan al-Rahbi. Watching the Sultanate of Amman Television before we went nice bulletin, here are the main points once again. His Majesty Sultan Haitham issues five royal decrees. His Majesty Sultan reviews through telephone calls with the Emirs of Kuwait and Qatar, King of Bahrain and Prime Minister of India, the excited efforts in reducing the spread of COVID-19. And the Minister of Health announces 14 new confirmed cases with coronavirus COVID-19 and 67 recoveries. And that's all from the newsroom from all of us here. Good night.